They're speaking through you. Right? So it's so we kind of wonder, what's the reward? You know, if we're likened unto Jesus, if we're going to want to be just like Jesus, aren't we going to receive the same treatment as Jesus? Right? If we wanted to be like Peyton Manning and, and how Peyton Manning wanted to be just like his dad, wouldn't his, you expect, you know, his dad received great treatment and respect? So you would imagine and expect Peyton Manning to receive that same treatment and respect. Right? Right? Our great super uh, sports heroes. But with Jesus, you know, he got no respect. He got no love. He got no care. They spat on him. They beat on him. They told him each and every day, you're not the son of God. They denied him, they rejected him, they hated him. And isn't that exactly the same treatment we are going to receive? By who? By, by our enemies. And you say, who are our enemies? Your moms, your dads, your brother-in-laws, brother your sister-in-laws, your cousins, your aunts, and your uncles. Those people. Those people. Jesus says, no prophet, nobody who loves him, no, no son of the living God has ever, ever accepted in their own town or their own country or their own household. What do we do with that? What do we do with that one? When you want to love somebody with all your heart, yet they have no love for you at all. What do you do with that? Oh, well, have you ever wanted to, to love someone and to be loved by them? And yet they, they wouldn't give you the time of day. You ever wanted to, to call someone on the phone and you call them and you call them and you're like, well, man, if the only time we chat or talk is when I call you. And what would happen if I took a week off and never called you? And so you actually did it, you know, you, you didn't call them for a whole week. And then all of a sudden, <clears throat> it was like they never even knew you were missing. Yet in your heart, it, it, it meant everything to you for them to call you back. You ever felt that way? You're not alone. You're not alone. You know, that's the thing. You're not alone. And, and all these things are the rewards. You know, you receive a prophet as being a as being a prophet, then you will receive a prophet's reward. If you receive just a righteous man as being a righteous man, then then you will receive a righteous man's reward. And if you give even a cold cup of water to, to a disciple of Jesus Christ, not somebody starts thirsty, starving to death, or whatever. No, a disciple of Jesus Christ, because he is one of Jesus' disciples. You even give him a cold glass of water. And you certainly would not lose your reward. For anyone who receives you, receives Jesus Christ. For it is Jesus Christ who, who sends you out to, to bear witness. To bear witness. Of, of, of the grace God has for, for, for us, a, a sinful man, sinful woman, an imperfect person. You know, we think we got to do something to obtain this grace. But we don't have to do anything, you know, that's the thing. Jesus, later in, in John chapter 15, he's explained, you know, I am divine. 
You know, they're about ready to walk through one of the worst times of Jesus' life. They, even all the disciples, everybody is uneased. They have their last supper and, he, and he's just telling them that. You know, they're going to take it and beat me down. They're going to destroy me. They're going to hang me on the cross and all this stuff. And, and don't worry, just as I told the centurion soldiers. You know, uh, I'm going to leave. And you won't be able to find me. But I will return. But where I go, you cannot come. And they couldn't understand it and they couldn't figure it out. You ever have some of the worst moments in your life? Jesus says, don't be anxious. When we look at the world today of war, and the threat of war, all these different things to create worry and stress in our life. And he says, don't be anxious. Do not worry. You know, that's the thing. It's, it's about our faith that can stand strong in the face of our enemies. As we will not deny Jesus Christ. We will not deny the fact that we are the sons of the living God. No matter how bad we are treated, no matter how or what happens in our lives, no matter what anybody says to us, we, the, the truth of the facts are, we are his children. And, and we don't have to obtain it. He says, I am the divine. And you are the branches. He says, I am the vine and you are the branches. He says, you are already been pruned. Because no branch can come into the vine unless it is God himself who, who connected the two together. And you have been pruned. You have been accepted. You have been justified as being a branch. And that's the thing with our lives, you know. How is it we're going to produce fruit for God? Being a branch connected to the vine. You ain't going to produce the darn thing for God. It's Jesus Christ living in you. That's going to produce whatever it is God wants to produce. Whatever it is. God wishes to produce his grace in our lives. You know, that's the thing we, we say, can, does that mean we can just keep on sinning just so God's grace may abound, may, may be here? And that's what he's saying is, God's grace is here, and it's impossible to be outside of here. If God's grace is here, it's impossible to sin. Not because we can't keep sinning. We cannot. Why? Because the grace is here. And it makes it impossible. Well, what if I keep doing? You can't keep sinning. Because God's grace is here. And it's no longer possible to sin. For you are connected to the vine. You are a branch. And you will produce fruit for the living God. He will take away your tears. He will restore you. He will lead you to, to, to streams of living water, just as he leads the deer to, to the rivers to, to drink. He will do this for you. How is it that you feel that the Spirit of God has moved you to watch a goofy guy like me? It's tough, you know, because I've lived a, a wild life. I've lived a life in, in a fire. Yet, I am here today, just, just in case. By one chance, you, you just thought for one moment, ah, if I maybe just give this guy a chance, because in a moment, in an hour, tomorrow, uh, I'm giving up hope. But, but a little voice in my ear, something whispered into me. It said, just, just give it a chance. And I'm telling you, the grace of God says, you, you, you haven't done anything to separate yourself from God. All, all you must do is raise up your heart, your eyes, stand on your feet and recognize. It is because God's grace is here. We cannot sin. 
It's not like I, I have to do something and then you become a, a part of the vine. You are approved. You have been pruned. You are loved. You know, that's the thing. All Jesus ever asked us to do is love them as though you would love yourself. Love them. You say, who? Your enemies. And embrace that. And that's what Jesus is saying. And the truth will set you free. See, I don't have to do nothing to be crafted in. No, you, you are grafted in. You mean I don't have to clean up my hands? I don't have to quit smoking? I don't have to quit drinking? No, I, I'm telling you, because God's grace is here, you, you cannot sin. You cannot <clears throat> be unpleasing to God. It, it is God's pleasure to, to bail us out. You know, that's the thing. It's not about God hating men or humanity. It's about God's love for humanity. And if God loves you, if a father loves you, doesn't he chastise you? Doesn't he teach you? Doesn't he sometimes spank your butt? Sometimes give you stern words, you know? Doesn't he care for your being? And if God is our father, the greatest being of love beyond our mind, Loves us. What's going to take us from that? What's going to take us from that? He goes on to say, All right, listen up, children. It says, Brother will deliver brother over to death, and father his child. And children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. Right? You'll be hated by all, by all the sin of this world. You'll be hated by, by all the sin of this world. And you say, why? What do you mean? You'll be hated by this sin because God's grace is, is here. Yeah. Sometimes we wonder, why does this world hate us? Why did I lose all my friends? What's, because God's grace is here. And the demonic forces of this world hates the grace of God that allows you to live your life free and full without fear. Without fear of sin. Without fear of being imperfect. It's the thing. Be brave and full of courage. Be brave and full of courage. Be strong. For it is the Lord our God who, who strengthens us, who gives us another day, who restores our hope. He says, When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly I say to you, it will not have gone through, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for his disciple to be like his teacher, and a servant like his master. If they have called the master the house of Beelzebul, they called Jesus, you know, they were saying just the chapters before, you know, talking about Jesus casting out demons because he was the king of demons. How many people are out there, right? How many people are judging by the law and so ready to, to hand people over as being as demonically possessed? 
Sometimes Jesus says, you know, I want you to go heal the sick. Cast out demons. But not everybody is sick. And not everybody is a demon. Sometimes they're just a little different than us. And we got to be okay with that. It takes love to heal the sick. And it takes fasting, prayer, and a great amount of love to cast out bad spirits. It takes the, the faith that Jesus Christ says, they will persecute you, they will get upset. It's about standing up for what is right. And that's what they get upset about, you know. How is it that he hands a sword to us as daughter-in-laws and mother-in-laws and aunts and uncles? You know how bad molestation is across America? Do you know how bad molestation is across America? That, that's a, a, a grown man taking advantage of, of, of a girl. Having the courage and strength to stand up and say, I'm going to acknowledge the sin. I'm not going to hide anymore. I'm not going to hide anymore. I'm not going to hide out in fear anymore. You know, a lot of people have visions from God about, and I, people tell me all the time, yeah, the mountains in Wyoming are going to blow up one day, and a, and a great earthquake's going to come, and it's going to wipe out half of America, and you live in Colorado, and it's going to get you too, and where, where are you going to hide? I'm not afraid. I want to stand up for what is right. Stand up for my faith. Stand up for, for the fact that I am created by God and I deserve to be loved. I deserve to be cared for. Sometimes we feel like we don't deserve it. And, and so we say nothing. We ain't worthy to, to say it. We're, we're too afraid to say that, hey, my uncle touched me or, or whoever it is touched me and hurt me. I'm too afraid to, to start a riff in the family. But it's just through the, 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 the strength of Jesus Christ that if you want to put an end, break the chains of the cycle of child abuse, child molestation here in America, you got to stand up and say, I won't take it anymore. You got to acknowledge sin. You got to say, in my heart of hearts. And this is the work of Spirit of God is that He makes you new again. For you are dead, without hope, depressed, hurt. Broken. And he makes you new. Transforming your broken strength into his. And pop is the strength of I can do all things. Because all things are possible for God. And being able to do knowledge sin because it makes you so sad. What do we do with it? What do we do with it? Right? Do we go out and begin to beat them down? But with this new power? I know that's the temptation. I know that's what we want to do. We want to see justice be brought for us. We want to get our reward in. We want justice for us, right? But Jesus says, if you want to be a part of me, then forgive. But we must forgive and move on. And move on. We must recognize that, that Jesus wasn't sitting in the corner holding his arms like this, just watching it happen. You got to recognize that the pain and the suffering of our suffering God, seen there on the cross, seen here in his life. That, that, that's the, the demonstration of how he suffers for us, for us. How, he, how he's hurt 
for us. How he's weeping for us. Because he's in just as much pain as we are. Because that's how much he hates sin too. And God says this is the answer to the sin. Forgive it. You must forgive it. As, as he has forgiven you, you must forgive it. In that peace, just, just having the peace to know I don't got to do anything to measure up to, to God's grace and mercy. I don't have to work. I don't have to justify. I don't have to go feed the poor. I don't have to do anything. But love Jesus Christ. Love Jesus Christ. Jesus says, if, if you love me, then you will obey me. If you love me, you will obey me. He says, love each other. Love them, your neighbors, your enemies, as though you would love yourself. Jesus Christ forgives us for all sin, without sin, a life without sin. No, I, I, I see. no, without sin. If you have guilt and shame and think you're living in sin, it's because you don't believe Jesus Christ took them all away. You don't believe it. Without sin. And if God would take away all sin, so you may live a life of joy. That, that's his grace. You know, that's the thing. We, we, we wonder about those, you know, like homosexuals. Are they living in sin? And not if they believe in Jesus Christ. If you brought them into your house, into your home, and you extended the grace of God into their lives, no sin. 